Hello, welcome back. This is Michael again. Welcome to the Joy of Code and we uh, will continue pretty much straight where we left off last time talking about object interaction again but about an alternative. Here is my scenario again, the uh, incomplete breakout thing with the score counter in but I've reset it pretty much to the point where we started last time. So if I run this now, um, the ball flies and bounces but no counting is happening at all. Um, here in the constructor counter gets created but it does not get passed onto the pedal. The pedal again now has um, it does nothing in the constructor. I, I left the skeleton of the constructor here but it does not receive a counter, it does not store a counter, um, it does not pass the counter to the ball. Um, so essentially we are back to the starting point where we have no object interaction with the counter set up. We have the counter created but I want to show you an alternative structure to what we have done last time. So we are again, as we were last time, we are in the situation um, that we have seen in our picture here where we have um, a world object um, created and I need to switch over here to my pen. Let's see whether I can activate this. Um, this is not working, come on. Why is my graphics tablet no ups there I am okay so we have a situation where we have our world object uh, the world object creates a counter and keeps a reference to it um, and the world object creates the pedal and the pedal creates the ball and we have said before um, all actor objects have a reference back to the world so here the pedal has a reference to the world the ball has a reference to the world and in fact with the get world um, get world method call you can res retrieve that reference so in the ball if you say get world um, that will give you the reference to the world so every actor actually stores that reference and that method gives you the mechanism to retrieve that reference so what we've done last time is we have passed a reference to the counter along to the pedal and to the ball so that the ball actually had this reference um, to the counter um, so we ended up with the pedal having a reference to the counter and the ball having a reference to the counter and then they all could um, talk to the counter. That ends up um, working but you have a lot of references all over the place and it's actually a little bit messy. So let's remove that again. What I've done in the Greenfoot scenario now is I removed all that again and we will try an alternative. What we will do now because the ball actually has this reference here to the world we will make use of that reference. So when the ball wants to um, count up instead of because the ball cannot talk directly to the counter now because again we have no reference from the ball to the counter what we'll do instead is we get the ball to tell the world that it wants to record a score. Um, so we create a new method here in the world and then the world just passes that along to the counter and tells the counter to update the score. Um, so we are going from the ball indirectly through the world to the counter um, and that actually um, has a slightly tricky bit in there but it ends up being a slightly better solution and I'll come back to that at the end and tell you why but let's first make that work. So we get the ball to, to call a method in the world, um, a method that we have to create to um, record a score and the world then passes that on to the counter object. Let's try to make that happen. Okay, here um, in the counter, uh, sorry, not in the counter, in the ball, um, that is the place here in our code where we had um, counted up the score before. Um, so um, here my world subclass is called board. So I want to get that board object, that is the object here um, that represents the whole world um, and I want to store it. So um, I want to say get world and I want to store it in an um, object of type board. Um, I say my board is get world and that gives us the get the world object. And so if I say get world, there, this will not work. There is actually a problem here when I try to compile this um, I get a an error message here about incompatible types that says it found a Greenfoot world but expected a board. That is because here um, 
the get world method gives me something if you look at the actor class here um, and we look at the get world method where is it get world is declared to return an object of type world so here the compiler knows this call get world will give us something of type world but I'm trying to store it in an object of type board um, and that is a problem. The compiler says, well, that doesn't work. The thing on the right-hand side of the assignment isn't the same as the thing on the left-hand side of the assignment. But, in fact, I know, because a board is a world, um, in my particular case, because what's created actually is a board, the board is also of type world, but it is also of type board, because here I've got what's called an inheritance relationship. The object I'm getting from get world is actually of type board, but the compiler doesn't know that, so the compiler th only knows because it's specified as to be of type world. The compiler says it doesn't match. I can use a cast. I just use here the word board in parentheses. Um, that is telling the compiler that my world, in my case, actually is a board, and it is okay to assign it to a variable of type board. So I get my world. The technical term then is I'm casting it to a board, which means that just means um, I'm telling the compiler that my world object actually is of type board. Um, so a casting doesn't change the object. The object actually was already a board object, just the compiler didn't know that. So I'm telling the compiler, what you're getting back here is of type board, and then I can assign it to my board variable. And then I can say my board dot score. Um, and the score method doesn't exist yet. That will not work because my board doesn't have a score method, but I can make it now. And that's also why I need this to be of type board and not to be of type world because the world class doesn't have a score method and it can never have one because we cannot change the world class. We can't add, add anything to it. But the board class we can change. That's why we need this to be of type board. That's why we need the cast because now I can make my own methods. In the board class, I can just add a method here and because it's getting called from the actor class here, from the ball class, uh, it must be public. Public void score um, and here now I have a score method that gets called from here. So if I compile this, compile my board, that compiles fine. Now from my ball class I got the world and I called a score method that's finished. Now here's score, we need to implement something. If you look at that in our um, diagram, we have now called here from the ball class up to the world class into a method called score. And that method now does nothing yet, but that now needs to tell the counter to count up. And in the world class, that is actually very easy to do because in the world class we have our counter field, we have um, access to the counter, so we can just say um, counter dot, and I forget what it was called, but I've called company add score. It was called add score. So let's try that out. We compile this and see every time when the ball hits the pedal. Yes, the score comes up. So this works. Um, this works, in fact, fine. And it's not a problem at all. So what we've done here now um, is uh, we have now called from the ball up to the world class, from the world class up to the counter, and invoke the add score method over here. This variant, compared to the first one that we saw in the previous episode, is actually a bit nicer. Both variants work, so in any case we need to get information from the ball class to the counter class. We need the ball um, eventually to get the counter to add the score. In the first version, we did that by giving the ball a direct reference to the counter. In this version, we do that by using the references we have and going indirectly by the ball telling the world to add the score and the world then telling the counter. Um, this second version uh, is uh, the slightly nicer version because the references, the object reference structure that we have here looks like this. We have fewer references, it is less messy, um, and that actually is in design terms, in um, object oriented design, a better solution. Um, the technical term for that is coupling. We technical, technically would say this solution has lower coupling, which means we have lot, uh, we have less dependencies of classes between each other. Um, 
it is actually a good thing that the ball class doesn't know the counter. The ball class just tells the world, um, okay, I want to record a score. And the world can decide itself how it wants to represent it on screen. And in my situation, we do that by um, showing a counter object on screen. But if we later change our mind and we say, okay, we don't want this counter, I actually want something different. I want a new fancy counter. You know, then in my previous solution where I had these references here and a reference there um, all over the place, if I change my mind and I want to modify something, suddenly it changes here and it changes here and it changes here and I actually have to make um, changes in lots of different places. Um, that is a side effect of having so many references. So having few references and just making uh, routing the calls through the references you have is in object-oriented structure terms the better solution. So this is probably how we will leave it for next time. Okay, that was the next lesson in object interaction and object structures. Thanks for viewing. Until next time, bye-bye.